So this is a view of Air Handler 3-4, pretty much how we received it. The only exception is the door has been opened on the control panel access there. This is the filter section and cooling coil section. And then we'll pan around that just to give you a view how it was packaged. The next section to the left is the supply fan section. You can see the supply fan discharge there, about a 10 inch square on the front face. We've got the VFD on the opposite side and on this near side the door that's open is the control panel cabinet. And then finally this is the mixing box section with the dampers. So on top of the mixing box section you can see Tracer TU software and a Dell laptop. That's one of those for the whole job. Uh, we'll have the Tracer TU loaded on the laptop and just in case that would give you access to configure some of the controls. Although they should be configured and set up based on our testing so that that shouldn't be required. These two boxes have the filters. So there are 18 inch bag filters, four of them. And then to the left, there's a box with the two inch pleated media filters. In this still shot, the one box, the bigger box on the mixing box section near the laptop and the tracer to you that we didn't talk about is a box that has the actuator and the three-way control valve. There will be two of those boxes, one for each air handler. So now we'll pan to the right and we'll see air handler 3-3. Mixing box on the left connected to the filter and coil section and then the supply fan section is the last part on the right by the chair. The open door is the control panel cabinet. Moving around to the front discharge from the supply fan you can see the blue supply fan wheel through the opening there. We'll come back and get some close-up shots of that. This is the variable frequency drive for supply fan speed and then looking down at the coil connections and the door access for each of the sections. Now we'll go back through and get close-up shots. So this is a look into the supply fan wheel. Now moving in you can see the two probes on either side of the wheel. Those are connected to the airflow monitoring station and then the large approximately four inch silver probe is the discharge temperature probe. Now we're looking down at the variable frequency drive and then the door open to the supply fan section. There are several loose control components that ship inside the supply fan section. This is a close-up of the nameplate for Air Handler 3-3. And we'll see that there are gasket material, spare gasket material for the doors. And the other box that you see there is the display that snaps into the front of the control panel door. That uh, display ships protected in a box and gets snapped in and we'll cover that during training how that gets uh, connected. Now we'll continue with the tour. This would be considered the right hand side of the unit. We talk about airflow in terms of standing inside the unit with the air blowing in your face. So this would be on the right hand side as you're standing in the unit with airflow moving at you. This is the mixed air temperature sensor leaving the cooling coil. There you can see the cooling coil header and then we're panning down so you can see the drain pan uh, condensate overflow switch and a close up I think we zoom in and get it clear there you go with the part number again the temperature sensor for air temperature leaving the chilled water coil this is a close up of the actuator and the three way chilled water valve that ships loose for field installation We see the chilled water coil connections there and the drain pan connection beneath that. So some close-up pictures of the mixed air temperature sensor and the condensate overflow switch again. And here's a still shot of the nameplate on the three-way valve actuator. Again, we saw those before in the video. Those are just still shots of the same device. Working our way down the right-hand side, now we're going to see a very similar mixed air temperature sensor, but this is in the mixing box. 
So after outside air and return air have mixed, here's one of the two dampers. And unfortunately, I forgot to take the, um, the shipping board off the top so you could see the other uh, duct connection. Uh, but supply air and, excuse me, return air and outside air connect in the mixing box. There is a single actuator with a linkage that controls both of those dampers. And now we zoom in at the control umbilical connection between the mixing box and the cooling coil section. And we dip down inside here, try to get a shot of the actuator. So there's the back damper. And there's the actuator. And that is again linked to a damper on the top face of the mixing box. So that we have two connections, one for return air and one for outside air. The next shot is a still shot of the actuator with its part number. And now we go back to a video where we do a close-up of the controls umbilical so that you can connect the signal from the control panel back into both the mixing box actuator and that mixed air temperature sensor that's strung along the face of that section. Here we've got views of some ship loose items. Again, those would be found shipping in the supply fan section. And then we come over and look at the control panel. We'll go back and get still shots of the components that we just panned by. The first close-up is of the CO2 sensor. This is placed in the return air ductwork and is used by the control panel to modulate the amount of outside air that's coming into the mixing box. Again, there's a damper linkage, so as we reduce the amount of outside air, we increase the amount of return air and vice versa. This is a close-up of the relative humidity sensor, again placed in the return air duct. This is for information purposes only. It shows up on the display screen to make sure that we're monitoring the relative humidity in the space as it comes back through the return ductwork. The next is a close-up inside the control panel. We've got the main board on top, approximately 8 inches across. That's the UC600. And then we have two expansion boards in the next channel beneath that. We mentioned before that the TD7 display, the display module for our main controller, ships in a box so that it's protected but snaps into the front panel of the control panel. This is the location where the TD7 display snaps into place. And this is what the display will look like. Again, physically snapped into the front of the UC600 panel, this cartoon will show up and represents the return air ductwork coming back into the top of the unit, outside air being ducted into the back wall of the mixing box. Moving to the right, you can see the blue filter media. Moving further to the right, you see the chilled water coil and three-way valve uh, piped in there with the blue and aqua colored piping. Then we move forward to the supply fan and you can see a VFD indicator there. And then moving forward, finally supply air discharge. If we move around this drawing, you can see the labeling of the different information that we'll provide. Starting at the very top center, humidity, and we talked about the relative humidity sensor that will get mounted in the return air ductwork. CO2 currently showing at 11 parts per million. That CO2 sensor input to the UC600 controller is what will drive the outside air damper position on the mixing box. If we walk over to 9 o'clock on the drawing, you can see damper position 0%. So that outside air damper position uh, will correlate with the CO2 being measured. Moving over to the right, on the bottom of the unit, you see condensate overflow normal. So if that was an alarm because there was a condensate overflow situation, uh, that would change. The chilled water control valve percentage open uh, will be displayed at the next little position to the right. Moving over to the front of the unit, supply air conditions, you'll see discharge flow in liters per second. And that's again coming from those two probes that we showed you on either side of the blue fan wheel. In addition to discharge air flow, we have discharge air temperature. That was the approximately four inch long probe coming in from the right hand side, right above the blue fan wheel. Uh, we showed you a picture of that earlier. So we'll display the discharge air temperature there. Uh, on top of the supply fan, we see status, whether it's running or not, the start stop command 
whether it's been commanded or not, and then finally the speed percentage of the fan. The last two uh, things are user interfaces where space temperature set point override isn't available. You can touch that and go into a, a second screen. And then the discharge air temperature set point override. And we'll talk through how those relate and how they tie into the control system during the training. One quick item to note on the supply air conditions, the last item listed is humidity. And that item is actually going to be removed and edited out. That was a, a duplicate. The only humidity sensor we have in the system per the design is in the return air ductwork. So now we're clicking through, seeing the different screens, alarms, how to clear alarms, and the overrides that are available, both space temperature, changing the space temperature set point, and the discharge air temperature set point.